Hello everyone, Darren from Draytec Australia in New Zealand and welcome to Island Technologies presentation on Draytec Vega ACS3. This is the final part of our webinar series about ACS3 to help you to successfully install and configure various components of it to allow you to easily manage your customer networks. In today's presentation we'll look at the SD-WAN features available in Vega ACS3. That includes enabling SD-WAN on Vega ACS3, Auto VPN, VoIP WAN, full traffic control with router policy, the dashboard for SD-WAN, and statistics and monitoring for SD-WAN network groups. Let's start by looking at a bit of background about what SD-WAN is and why we might need an SD-WAN solution. Most business applications were traditionally run on private servers in the headquarters with MPLS, that's multi-protocol label switching, routing traffic to branch sites. However, with businesses now adopting SAAS, that's software as a service, and private and public cloud applications, new technologies are required to efficiently and dynamically route traffic either to the central site or to the cloud directly. The solution here is to use ST-WAN to make the complex routing decisions simple and intuitive. SD-WAN further improves things by focusing on the interface and application quality based on traditional load balancing and failover functions in the routers. Vega ACS3 is the core of the Draytech SD-WAN solution and provides a user-friendly interface with a responsive display that automatically adjusts and arranges content to suit a variety of devices such as PCs, tablets or phones. It uses an auto configuration server, that is ACS, together with Draytech Edge Routers, which is just the term used for routers installed at the head office and branches. At the moment that includes business class routers like the Vega 2865, 2866 and 2927 series and the 2952, 2962 and 3910 models, but more may be added in the future. These edge routers can receive SD-WAN configurations from the Vigor ACS3 server, perform the edge computing according to SD-WAN policies, and upload the data to the Vigor ACS server for monitoring. Here's an example of how SD-WAN might be used. So here we have the branch edge router connected to multiple ISPs. Well, two in fact in this diagram, that is ISP A and ISP B. It uses WAN 1, ISP A for Google, Dropbox and Yahoo, while WAN 2, ISP B is used for Skype, Microsoft Office and Facebook, as well as a VPN to the HQ. ACS3's SD-WAN implementation takes things even further by adding monitoring and failover ability based on WAN quality. SD-WAN isn't enabled by default in Vigor ACS3, you have to enable it first, but that isn't difficult. To enable it, simply open Network Management under Root Network. Specify a network group, uh, for example iLAN technology, which contains CPEs that support SD-WAN. You'll find a full list of Draytex SD-WAN compatible devices on the ACS3 product page, and I'll leave a link to that in the description below. On the setting page, turn on the toggle button at number one here to enable SD-WAN. Then click Reset Bulk Data Profiles to Default at number two here to use the bulk data profiles with the default values. Then click Save, and that's it. One of the great features of SD-WAN within ACS3 is the Auto VPN feature, which allows connecting multiple sites together with just a few clicks. There's two types of auto VPN with the SD-WAN feature available in ACS3. The first is hub and spoke, where all routers connect to a central router. And the second is full mesh, where all routers are connected to all other routers. For hub and spoke, select one of the devices as the hub router. The other devices will be regarded as spokes. The Vega ACS server will automatically create one IPsec tunnel using AES256 encryption from each spoke router to the hub router. If a subnet conflict occurs, Vega ACS can design and suggest alternative LAN subnets for all devices. In this diagram, we have the hub in the Sydney office with other branches throughout Australia. And here's what a full mesh VPN can look like. Here you can see that all routers in Australia have VPN connections to each other. Once again, if a subnet conflict occurs, ACS3 can design and suggest alternative LAN subnets for all devices. We'll come back to these two VPNs shortly and show you how to configure them. Another feature of Draytex SD-WAN solution is intelligent VoIP optimization. If a router has multiple WAN connections, a MOS, that's a mean opinion score, is calculated for each one. The MOS is based on latency, jitter, packet loss and other factors. 
This is then used to select the best quality interface to be used for VoIP traffic. That includes SIP registration and inbound and outbound VoIP calls. In the example shown here, WAN 1 has the highest MOS of 4.3, so it has been selected as the VoIP WAN. In addition, VoIP sessions are constantly monitored in real time, with the MOS continuously updated by measuring latency, jitter and packet loss on the WAN connection. The MOS for each call is logged in the VoIP call list table. If the MOS for a VoIP session gets too low, the SD WAN feature will move the call to the secondary WAN connection, assuming it has a higher score. In the example shown here, phones A and B established calls through WAN 1, but when phone C also started a session through WAN 1, a drop in call quality was detected, so the call was moved to WAN 2. If the WAN 1 MOS drops significantly and there's a WAN with a higher score available, all VoIP calls will be moved to that WAN, which is WAN 2 in the example shown here. SD-WAN also provides routing control by allowing a network administrator to specify the desired route for selected applications and domains to ensure specific routing scenarios can be accomplished. You'll find this option under Configuration, Route Policy, plus Add New Route Policy. For example, in this diagram we can have Skype traffic going to ISP A connected to WAN 1 of the branch office. The SD-WAN dashboard allows quick access to a variety of monitoring and configuration options for an SD-WAN network group. To display the SD-WAN dashboard, you'll need to first select a network group under the root network. In the example shown here, we've chosen ILAN technology. Clicking on the SD-WAN tab in the dashboard menu will display MOS details for active physical WANs, active VPN connections and active VoIP calls. In the left-hand pane, you'll see wired and wireless WANs, which includes wireless 2.4 and 5 GHz WANs, LTE WANs, and USB WANs. Wired and wireless quality monitoring are separated because wired WANs usually provide better quality. For active VPN status monitoring, we have IPsec VPN and other VPN. The quality levels are listed as great, good, okay, poor, and bad. Note that only VPN tunnels that have been established using the SD-WAN VPN tool are counted for VPN MOS. Every NATed VoIP call is monitored with MOS. Routed calls or VoIP via VPN are not counted at the moment. Note also that Viga ACS only captures signals from SD-WAN CPEs with the VoIP feature. The More tab under each section will display additional information for each category being monitored. OK, moving on to SD-WAN statistics. The statistics page under Root Network shows all devices for the network group and displays statistics such as usage overview, wireless clients overview, data traffic, device ranking and client ranking. By clicking last 24 hours, last 7 days, last 30 days or custom setting which allows setting a custom period, the administrator can obtain various statistics within that time period. In addition, the statistics can be exported as an XLS file. To do that, just click the export button at the top right, then you can select the network group or an individual edge router. And that brings us to monitoring SD-WAN network groups. The monitoring menu offers options for monitoring normal and abnormal conditions for a network group and CPE devices. In the example shown here, we chose SD-WAN network and we find the same options for alarms, logs, devices, clients, cellular data usage, floor plan and rogue AP detection as we do for network groups without SD-WAN enabled. Down below that, we get SD-WAN options for WAN, VPN, VoIP and data usage, which I'll go through shortly. If you'd like more detailed information about the configuration steps for this, check out Chapter 8 in the User Guide, which I'll link to in the description below. The WAN SD WAN network page displays the locations, names, interface IPs, uptime, usage, latency, jitter, packet loss, and interface MOS of the routers within the group. Clicking on the name of each router will display more details about it, including a map close up. Here we can see our Sydney main office located at Seven Hills, New South Wales on the map, as well as a graphic of the front panel of the router showing which ports are in use. Down the bottom are tabs for more details about each WAN. The VPN SD-WAN menu displays all routers connected with a VPN tunnel. In the example shown here, the VPN is a hub and spoke, with Sydney as the hub connecting two routers in the iLAN technology group in other cities around Australia. 
There's also an option to view the VPN Sankey diagram, which is a visualization to show data flow from one point to another in the VPN network. Here you can see what our hub and spoke VPN network looks like with all connections going to the Sydney office main location. Clicking on a particular node or edge router will show where it's located and the VPN connections it has to other sites. In this example, we have our Sydney office main router with a graphical display of its VPN connections. Scrolling down will display more details of the VPN SD-WAN related information such as usage, interface MOS, latency, jitter and packet loss. OK, let's now check out how to configure a VPN using the VPN SD-WAN basic and advanced settings. I'll just go through these briefly. We covered the hub and spoke as well as the full mesh VPN wizard in more detail in part 5 of this webinar series if you're interested. Clicking on plus add VPN tunnel within the monitoring VPN SD-WAN page will bring up a configuration wizard to allow you to easily create hub and spoke or full mesh VPN networks. So first we have a basic mode to set up VPNs in the network group. Here IPsec is the default VPN protocol used. For a hub and spoke VPN network you just select that option as shown in the screenshot on the left here and then select a hub, for example the main office router. Then the remaining routers within the network will be spokes. You can delete any that you don't want included and then click save and set to CPEs to finish. For a full mesh VPN network the process is much the same, just select that option as shown in the diagram on the right and all the routers in the network will appear. Delete any that you don't want included and then click save and set to CPEs to finish. ACS3 will automatically create the VPNs from there using IPsec with AES256 encryption. So what do you do if you want to use a different encryption method or a different type of VPN? Okay, so you might have noticed the advanced mode option below those two wizards. Clicking on that will allow you to select from one of four types of VPN, IPsec, PPTP, L2TP and SSL. For IPsec you can customise the IKE pre-shared key here and you can also change the IPsec security method. Options available are AH, DES no authentication, DES, 3DES no authentication, 3DES, AES no authentication and AES. For the PPTP advanced option the username is generated automatically. The password can be customised and entered manually by flicking the switch. Otherwise it too will be auto generated. PPP authentication options can be either PAP CHAP, MS CHAP, MS CHAP V2 or PAP only. VJ compression can also be enabled or disabled. For L2TP you can select from three options for IPsec policy which are none, nice to have and must. And just like the PPTP options the username is generated automatically and you have the option to customise the password or allow it to be generated automatically as well. And PPP authentication can be either PAPCHAP, MSCHAP, MSCHAP V2 or PAP only. For SSL you can change the SSL port Username is generated automatically and once again you have the option of customising or auto generating the password and the same PPP authentication and VJ compression options as we saw for PPTP and L2TP. Okay, another SD-WAN monitoring function is VoIP SD-WAN. This shows the communication status for incoming and outgoing calls via the VoIP WAN. Information includes a MOS along with LAN IP, peer IP, call ID, interface, start time, failover interface, uptime, latency, jitter and packet loss. For each call a coloured status indicator shows the call quality level which can be either great, good, ok, poor or bad. A great status will have a MOS of between 5.0 to 4.3 while a bad MOS is anything below 3.0. In data usage SD-WAN we can see all the edge routers in a group, their locations and data usage. In our example here's what we see when we select Sydney Office Main to check the data usage. At the top we have tabs to sort usage by application or client devices, while down the bottom we get a traffic line chart which can show either upload, download or by interface. In application view, when we select instant message, it'll display all the instant messaging apps used. Clicking on an app, for example Facebook, Instagram, will display client data. 
Clicking on the client data will display additional information such as the WAN interface used. Scrolling down the application list will show the data usage for each application. Similarly, for client device list, you can see the total data traffic for each device. Okay, so that wraps up our webinar series about ACS3. In summary, in part one, we looked at what ACS3 is, how it works, its key features, and how to install it. In part two, we went through how to create networks and add devices. Part three covered user management and what features each level of user could access, plus some other features such as the UBI or out of the box experience for new users logging in. In part four, we looked at device monitoring capabilities and how to generate reports. In part five, we looked at auto VPN and VPN monitoring in more detail than we did today, including configuration walkthroughs. Part six covered provisioning of CPE devices, which included creating configuration profiles using TR069 parameters that could then be applied to numerous CPE devices, as well as upgrading firmware remotely. In part seven, we looked at maintenance tasks that included backing up and restoring configs, scheduling firmware upgrades, resetting passwords, as well as ACS3's built-in file manager. Part eight, system functions, looked at a variety of topics under the system menu available to a system administrator. That included changing system parameters, adding other languages, clearing logs, adding an API key for Google Maps and Google Analytics, adding certificates, backing up the database, changing the login screen, and more. And today we wrapped up with an overview of the SD-WAN features included in ACS3. You'll find links to all of those webinars in the description below, as well as a link to the ACS3 product page. Okay, we hope this series of webinars will provide a better understanding of what ACS3 can do, as well as how to use its various features. If you have any questions, we'll be on hand to answer those in the live chat on the right of your screen for the next five minutes. For more information about Draytech products, please check out our website at www.draytech.com.au. You can also email us at sales at draytech.com.au or give us a call on 02983888899. Please like and subscribe below. And if you'd like a notification anytime we put up a new video, please give that bell a click too. Thanks and bye for now.